Welcome everybody to Pinoy Bounce. Kumusta kayo dyan? This is the show for the Filipino basketball community where we talk about anything basketball, whether it be Filipino leagues or even just in the NBA. We'd like to start off this show by talking about what's up in the NBA. With me is Marky Mark right there, our virtual host. He has a nice scarf on looking all wrapped up. But the first topic that we'll talk about in What's Up NBA is also about something getting wrapped up. And COVID is wrapping the league up. And now there's some games that are canceled. So let's talk about just, Marky, do you think we should, you know, let the NBA still go on? Or should we just, you know, cancel cancel just some games and then hopefully everything will work out? Oh, man, um, this is a very controversial topic because it's more like, hey, the fan, I want to have nothing to do. There's nothing going on. I need some sort of entertainment. So if you're an NBA fan, you're like, let's keep the games going or else I have nothing to watch. I'm going to be bored out of my mind. But then what's happening now is that you're going to have issues where a lot of players have tested positive for COVID. You got Jason Tatum, you got Carl Anthony Towns, you got a bunch of players, uh, superstars that are um, that are have to be on uh, self-isolation and because of the NBA contact tracing, whoever they've been in contact with have to go and self-isolate as well. So we got actually a bunch of various games that have been postponed because there's not enough players available to play. So they have, I think, a minimum of eight, six to eight players have to be available to suit up. And if you have any less than that, the games cannot actually be played. So there's so many games that have been postponed and then there's various injuries that happen. So you, you had, you're dealing with People that have to be in health and safety protocols because of contact tracing and you got injuries. Now your teams are getting depleted, uh, depleted to play and it's affecting the game because you're going to have games where you have your superstar that are not able to play or um, not enough complete uh, teams that can play. And it's affecting their schedule. It's affecting their um, performances. You're going to have games where they a team will simply lose because they don't have enough players. So I feel like as a fan, you're like, let's continue the game. But then as a um as an NBA player, you're like, I'm putting my life at risk by doing this. And for the sake of what, you know, we can we can continue playing, but then everybody's uh, getting in danger with contact tracing, with COVID. And I feel like as a fan, let's continue the game. But then as an NBA player, it's really, you know, you're getting paid to play, but then you're also getting paid to risk your, your life and your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And also what else is being affected is obviously your fantasy league. Marky, <laughs> your fantasy league, you can't really judge uh, judge players and their worth properly because some of them have to be benched, right? For me, I think I think that the league, well, the easiest way would just to go in the bubble again, right? But everyone doesn't want to go into the bubble. LeBron saying it was traumatic, right? There's Everyone doesn't want to be in a bubble again. But I mean, for an audience, you obviously want to see games. So I think it, it, it then leans on another way for a team to be successful you just have to have a great bench and it can come i guess it can come down to coaching too you got to adapt as well it's almost like you got to be smarter as a coach we, we don't have our star now or they don't have a star or this or that so i feel like it's gonna give teams a harder time because they have to adapt but in terms of just health i think in terms of a, a health person i feel like they shouldn't be playing at all, you know. What's the special consideration for athletes? I mean, they're just they're just athletes. Are they really essential? Entertainment is essential, is is supposed to be essential. But I mean, if if US is really going down the drain in terms of COVID cases and you know everything's a mess, I feel there's more important things. But as a fan, everyone's like, NBA, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to another uh, another topic that's it's kind of obviously controversial and you know everyone has opinions about whether they should run the league but the next topic let's talk about is just games that you've watched and any any players that have stepped up obviously chris boucher you know stepped up and obviously the big you know brooklyn nets uh, big 3 that just happened and they just came and they lost even with kyrie on did you watch that game uh what games have you watched? The Cleveland game and yeah. the, um, the Cleveland versus Brooklyn game. That was an interesting... Uh, I didn't watch the full game, but I've seen the highlights. It was kind of a um, uh, a good revenge game for Cleveland to show uh, Kyrie, you know. Um, as much as you think you have the better team, uh, here's uh, what you left behind, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got players like Colin Sexton, who was already a young bull, 
uh, showing them what's up, right? So you got um, players like Jared Allen getting his revenge back from the net, saying, "This is what you traded. Uh, you traded me for this, right?" So I, I think um, Cleveland has a future in them. They got really good young prospects. So they got Colin Sexton. They got uh, Okoro, who's a really good uh, draft pick this year. They got Garland, and they still have Larry Nance Jr., Andre Drummond, a very deep team. Um, I don't know what their plan is with Drummond, with Jared Allen back in um, now in the team, but I'm pretty sure they're both looking to trade him for an asset. So this guy, this team's got a really good future in them. And uh, with Brooklyn Nets, this is a winner bust. That's a lot of expectation. But the good thing about them is there's no better team to put that kind of expectation than the team like this who has stars that have handled so much pressure. So um, I'm interested to see. Uh, it's still early in the season for us to decide that these teams is going to be a bust. But um, uh, what I've been really impressed about uh, this season that I watched is Golden State. Like, I mean... We thought that they were done for, um, and and that Curry cannot carry a team. And this past few games, he's been balling out of his mind. And mm-hmm. um, uh, the Golden State is literally you. Uh, there was an idea in terms of if they can just like have four players kind of just hold hands together and form a circle around Curry while he's dribbling the ball, but then he can get open and then just let him score. <laughs> and I think that's how good he's been. That you can literally just crowd him and just like you know Draymond. Uh, Kelly Oubre, James Wiseman, and like Andrew just kind of hold hands together and form a really big circle, <laughs> just hold so hands. that nobody can get near Curry and he can just pull up from anywhere in the three pointer and just win them the game. <laughs> yeah, because he had that you know that high point of the game was 63, 64, or 60, it was a yeah. 62, yeah, 62 points, right? And I, I was watching the highlights, and I think LeBron and LA were, were up for a while, and then Golden State came, came back to get that W. So, I mean. Curry is still trying to prove that he's not, you know, he, he's still there. He's still he's MVP. He's still, still MVP. He's a two-time MVP. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. When we come back, we're going to go into some one-on-ones. Uh, Mark's going to talk about fantasy and also we have some hoops. Mario Sip. When we come back, stay tuned. <laughs> 